Hey everybody, AmpReparGuy.com, 203-892-4119. Please like, share, and subscribe. So another Ameritron AL811H here. Started working on it prior to making a video. So I figured I should make one real quick. So the customer can see everything I've done. And so all the rest of the people out here in the world can see that my work is consistent. Okay? So he was using it. And he said that the person he was talking to said he had some noise in there with a the signal. So he called Maritron and they said change the filter caps. And you don't just start swapping parts. It's not the way to fix something. So he swapped the caps. was still doing it. He never popped the line fuse. So what I did was I made sure they were fully discharged. And I lifted one leg of each resistor. And they're all within tolerance. The only time a cap usually fails is if a resistor fails. And... Black ones don't usually fail. It's usually the pink ones, the older ones that fail. Okay, so all of these were good. The caps are good. So his old, I checked his old caps. They're good. And, uh, you know, so took out this assembly here. I noticed that, you know, he told me that this wire was broken on the plate choke when he got it. So he resoldered it. And I see some solder or something down here where they stripped the enamel off. I'm going to re-secure the wire. It's starting to come unspooled. I put a little dab of super glue on there. Some of it already has the the stuff they put on it and it's held in place. You know, some some are wound better than others, but I'm gonna try to save that if I can. I'll do all the work under here. And he sent me a couple sets of Pentalab tubes. So a brand new set and the old set. So I tested those. I'm going to get back to work, and I'll give you guys a report when it's all done. And the SO239s look okay, but I do have to remove the metal oxide variester, and I'm going to take that gas discharge tube off the board. Someone made a comment about that. I've said it before in my videos. I'd rather, if a tube were to have a short, it's very unlikely with 572s, but you just never know. You know, it can end up with an anode to filament short. That happens with the, eight, with the Chinese 811 tubes. I'd rather it be brought to ground down here at the base of the socket, versus going all the way back to the board and then through the board and damaging the board. So, cheap insurance. So, okay, I will be back. Stay tuned. Okay, I checked both relays. They're functioning properly. Removed the metal oxide variester and the gas discharge tube from the board. Added the gas discharge tubes. The base of the sockets here. Also grounded the grids directly to the metal, touched up on solder joints, compressed the clips a bit, and cleaned them with deoxic gold. I have to go to the hardware store and get some super glue so I can re-secure the loose windings on the plate joke, and I'll get back to work. See you guys soon. So I'm back with the completed Ameritron amp. I'm going to do a power test, like doing these every once in a while. Radio set to 20 meters. Power output's roughly 58 watts from the transceiver. 1kW slug, bird 43, going into a bird dummy load. Amp set to 20 meters. Go ahead and key the, right, key the amplifier. Audio hello, audio hello. You see plate current and grid current. 800, 800, 800. Audio hello, audio hello, hello, hello. I will show voltage. So I'm going to crack it open and I'll show you all the work I did. See you soon. Okay, so I'm back. have the cover off. I'm going to go over everything I did. This thing needed a lot of different things. So the customer said he saw some funky stuff on the grid current meter. So I had this whole assembly out. Well, I had this assembly out and wanted to check the relays. So I disconnected the secondary leads and put heat shrink over them. So I could safely test them. So I checked them with my own meter, made sure the bias relay was working, the output relay, all that stuff. So ended up grounding the grids, added the gas discharge tubes. Saw that before. Added a longer screw in the plate choke. I checked all the bleeders, as I said before. So the nuts for the plate tuner variable cap were actually loose. Not loose, but they weren't really tight, so I, they were kind of like snugged, finger tight. So, well, I guess you could say loose. So I snugged those up. Same with the, the load air variable cap, snugged those up. What else did I do? So I removed the gas discharge tube from the board, metal oxide variester from the board. 
and uh, change the SO239 connectors. There are the old ones right here. The little parts. Here's the, the short screw holding the that holds the plate choke in. I used super glue and secured the windings. That clamp on the bottom was also loose, so I repaired that, tightened it up, and put super glue under it. So that is good. Clean the input circuit rotary switch and the output rotary switch slash band, sw slash band switch with deoxy gold. Test it for proper operation on all bands. I don't recommend using these on 17 meters because uh, it's documented, well documented online that sometimes you can have a series resonance issue with the plate choke. That's not good. You'll end up smoking with the plate choke. So everything else is good. So if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. Phone number is 203-892-4119. And this got a brand new set of Pentalab tubes. Awesome company. Awesome customer service. So... Thanks for watching. Like I said before, please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. 73.